My name is Edward L. Keaton. I am the Minister Emeritus to the Church of Christ at Boulder Crest Road in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I want to welcome you uh, to this uh, continued series of lessons entitled Timeless Truth in Truthless Times. Uh, and going forward, uh, the sub theme is Come to Jesus Now, which somehow implies the urgency uh, of needing to come to Christ and get one's life uh, together right now, immediately. Uh, the evangelist Harold Red will be the next speaker uh, coming to you. He is the minister to the Church of Christ at Midtown in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, and his subject matter is what the prophet said about Jesus and his text is Luke 24, verses 25 to 27, what the prophet said about Jesus. I'm thinking this is going to be a very interesting uh, series and particularly this subject. So after a song, the next voice will be that of Brother Harold Red, who is a very solid preacher, very scholarly, and very enlightening. Hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. please open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 24 and then turn back to the book of Genesis chapter 3 and those texts will uh, be used as we work through this message. And this sermon is designed to show that what the prophets believed about Jesus is important because to believe the prophets is to believe Jesus, and to believe Jesus is really to believe the prophets. The way I'm going to approach this is to read the text in Luke chapter 24, and then I will expound on verses 25 through 27 and we will explore Moses' writings as an example of prophetic work and finally we will do three practical applications and that will be our sermon for tonight. I'm reading in Luke 24, verse number 13. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to 
a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and their rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. And that came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said, to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up and that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now in that context, Jesus is up from the grave He's been crucified, buried, resurrected. Two men are walking along. Jesus just joined them. Said, what are you guys talking about? They said, you must be a stranger if you don't know what's going on around here. He said, what are you talking about? They told him about Jesus. And when they told him about Jesus, he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all 
that the prophets have spoken and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That's not that unusual for Jesus to talk about himself using scripture. In John 5, verse number 39, he told some people, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. So you search the scriptures, they testify of me. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now for the next few moments, I'm wanting to talk about what the prophets thought about Jesus illustrating with Moses. In our story, they're on a seven-mile journey, and that would take longer. We don't have that much time tonight. So I'm going to use Moses to show what the prophets said about Jesus as an example. And I'm going to use not just what Moses spoke, but what he wrote. That means we'll use Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the books of Moses. And I'll give you an example and a fulfillment in each of the five books as an illustration of, of what prophets thought about Jesus. In the book of Genesis, Jesus is pictured as the seed of woman. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15. God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Most people still see that as the first promise in the Bible about Jesus. And in the book of Galatians chapter 4, the Bible says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. Also in Genesis chapter 12, the promise made to Abram, God said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And you recall, Abram offered Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. God appeared again and said to Abraham, In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because... You have obeyed my voice. And then in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, Paul writes, Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and, and to seeds as of many, 
but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. One final Genesis prophecy. Jacob called his sons together, and in Genesis 49, 9 and 10, he said, Judah is the lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. But you can see just looking at messianic prophecies in Genesis that Moses has something to say about Jesus. In Exodus, he's the Paschal or the Passover lamb. So Moses listened as God said, I'll pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods in Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this shall be a memorial. And God gave Moses instructions for the Passover. You take a Passover lamb without blemish, kill it in the evening, and you never break the bones of the Passover lamb. In New Testament, John chapter 1, verse 19. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And they hung Jesus on the cross and crucified him, came to him to break his bones, but he was already dead. Now listen to scripture. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. In the book of Leviticus, Jesus is a sin offering, particularly the scapegoat. Leviticus chapter 16, verse number 21. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat. Confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 11, the Bible says, But Christ came as a high priest of good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption for us. 
So Jesus is a sin offering and a scapegoat. In the book of Numbers, Jesus is a number of things. In Numbers chapter 20, Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before a rock. Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod and water came out abundantly and the congregation and their animals drank. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. They all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. In Numbers 21, when the children of Israel grumbled, God allowed fiery serpents to bite them. And when they cried to God, God told Moses, take a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. So Moses made a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, and so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when they looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. And in New Testament, John chapter 3, the Bible says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And kind of like the passage in Genesis 49, there's one in the book of Numbers 24, when Balaam finally got it right, he said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not nigh, not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Tumah. And finally, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, Moses said, The Lord your God shall raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him shall you hear according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse number 22, For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. So let's just do a quick summary of what Moses said about Jesus. Because time forbids us talking long about all of the other prophets. But in Genesis... He's the seed of woman, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah. He's the lion of Judah. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's the sin offering and a scapegoat. In Numbers, he's a smitten rock, a brazen serpent a star of Jacob, a scepter in Israel. And in the book of Deuteronomy, he's a greater prophet than Moses who must be heard to avoid destruction. 
So what are we learning? I want to suggest, number one, that to believe the prophets is to believe in Jesus. Since the prophets testified of Jesus, and this type of faith or belief is necessary for salvation. So Jesus said to the men walking along the road to Emmaus, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. The scriptures testifying of Jesus and to believe the scriptures is to believe in Jesus and to believe in Jesus is to believe the scriptures. There's a story in Luke chapter 16 that Jesus told about a beggar named Lazarus and a rich man. And in the story, the beggar and the rich man died. And the beggar became comforted and the rich man was in torment. He said to Father Abraham, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to bring water to cool my tongue. He said, I can't do that. He said, then send him back to my father's house. So I, he can tell my brothers, don't come here. That's why I still tell people that if your loved ones are lost or saved, they have a message for you. If they're saved, they're saying, come on to this place. If they're lost, they're saying, don't come to this place. Father Abraham, I've got five brothers. Send somebody back to warn them. Tell them, don't come to this place. Father Abraham said they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, nay, Father Abraham, if one goes to them from the dead, they'll repent. I think that's kind of how we think about it too. That something other than what God has orchestrated will work. But Father Abraham said, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. He began at Moses and all the prophets had expounded to them the scriptures concerning himself. He told them in the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, they have Moses and the prophets. Once Paul was in a discussion with Festus and King Agrippa, and he talked about Jesus. And as they were talking about Jesus, he asked King Agrippa a question. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do believe. Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You're almost persuading me to be a Christian? Talking about Jesus and the prophets? Do you believe the prophets? Because if one believes in Jesus, He'll have to believe the prophets. If he believes the prophets, he'll have to believe in Jesus because the prophets talk about Jesus. And the second thing that I think we ought to appreciate is to believe the prophets and Jesus makes many teachings clearer. 
as Jesus joined the couple, their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. But it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him. So on the one hand, they didn't know him. On the other hand, they did know him. The only thing in between, beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, understanding Moses and the prophets opened their eyes. And I think that's true in a lot of cases. In this story, there's an example. Jesus said, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? The prophets predicted it. Isaiah 53, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation and he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich at his death because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus questioned, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And Isaiah predicted that he would suffer. And in New Testament, Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch said, of whom speaketh the prophet this? of himself or some other man. And Philip began at the same scripture and preached to him Jesus. You see, the prophets make things clearer. I think I could show that if you want to talk about the new covenant, it's in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. If you want to talk about the church, it's in all the prophets. Daniel 2, Joel 2, Isaiah 2, Micah 4. If you want to talk about Jesus, if you want to talk about a new covenant, if you want to talk about the church, the oneness of the church, all made clear in the prophets. So if a person would ask, do you believe the church or the new covenant or the plan of salvation? I might have a rather strange question. Do you believe the prophets? Because to believe the prophets is to believe Jesus. As a matter of fact, when you believe the prophets and Jesus, many teachings of Jesus are made clearer. And then finally tonight, I think it's important for us to remember that to believe in the prophets and Jesus calls us to decision. 
You have to do something with what you really know. So a big question is, what do you do with Jesus? Once Jesus looked at some people and told them, I am the bread of life. And you've got to partake of this bread. And if you, if you don't partake of this bread, you'll have no life in you. And as he talked like that pretty strongly, people began to leave. Finally, he looked at the apostles and said to the twelve, are you going away too? Peter spoke up, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. What I want you to think about with this third point is what you do with Jesus. Do you believe the prophets? Do you believe in Jesus? If you believe the prophets, you've got to believe that he's the son of God. If you believe he's the son of God, you're called to action. You've got to repent of your sins, make a confession with your mouth, and be buried with Christ in baptism, resurrected to walk a new life, in Christ Jesus. And then when you're resurrected in a new life, you've got to tell somebody. The two people who walked with Jesus said to one another, did not our heart burn within us as he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. Found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. They knew it was Christ. And they got up that very hour to tell somebody, you ought to be called to this kind of action. I will build the gospel. I will become a Christian. And I'll get up and go tell somebody. Come to Jesus now. Oh, come to Jesus now. Do you?